All right, so in this problem, I have 500 squared minus 499 squared. So I actually have two methods to solve this problem. So for method one, I'll first start by rewriting this, 500 squared minus 499 squared. And well, first off, I'm going to rewrite 500 squared. So 500 squared, this is the same thing as 499 plus 1 squared. And if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 499 and b equals 1. So this turns into 499 squared plus 2 times 499 times 1 plus 1 squared. And now this is equal to 499 squared plus 998 plus 1. And remember, at the end here, I have negative 499 squared. So now we can add that back in. And 499 squared minus 499 squared, these two cancel out. So I'm left with 998 plus 1. And this is equal to 999. So that is the first method of solving this problem. Now for method 2, I'm going to rewrite our problem. 500 squared minus 499 squared. And now this time, in last time we wrote, rewrote 500 squared, right? This time I'm gonna rewrite 499 squared. So 499 squared is the same thing as 500 minus one squared. And if I have something in the form a minus b squared, this is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is 500 and b is 1. So this is going to turn into 500 squared minus 2 times 500 plus, sorry, minus 2 times 500 times 1 plus 1 squared. And this simplifies to 500 squared minus 1,000 plus 1. And now we can go back and replace 499 squared with this. So we get 500 squared minus 500 squared minus 1,000 plus one. And this is all in parentheses, by the way. So now this is equal to 500 squared and now we're going to distribute the negative sign. So if I distribute the negative sign, that's basically like multiplying these terms by negative 1. So negative 1 times 500 squared is negative 500 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1,000 is positive 1,000. And negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Now these two 500 squares cancel out. So I'll be left with 1,000 minus 1. And 1,000 minus 1 is 999. So again, I get 999 as my answer.
Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 80. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 80 as 8 times 10. So we have 8 to the power of x is equal to 8 times 10. Now notice how we have two eights on both sides. And what I want to do is I want to move this eight to our left hand side. And the only way to do that is to divide both sides by eight. So if I divide both sides by eight, I get eight to the power of x divided by eight is equal to these two cancel out. So I'm simply left with 10. Now, this 8 here is the same thing as 8 to the power of 1, right? And now, if we have something in the form a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So, a to the power of x divided by a to the power of 1, we can think of a as 8 here x as m and 1 as n. So if we plug this in, we get 8 to the power of x minus 1. This is equal to 10. Now 8 here, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, right? So I'm going to rewrite 8 to the power of x minus 1 as 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, oops, sorry, n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 times x minus 1 is equal to 10. Now we have to simplify this, so we're going to distribute the 3. So this would be 2 to the power of 3 times x is 3x minus 3 times 1 is 3. Now this is equal to 10. So now we have 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to 10. And now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10. Now, an important property of logarithms is that let's say we have something in the form log a to the power of b, right? Well, we can actually move our exponent b here to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. And this is an important property because let's say we have some 2 to the power of x is equal to 5, right? A simple exponential equation. Well, we can just take the log on both sides. So we can move this exponent x to down because we wouldn't want, we can't solve this exp equation if x is an exponent. We want it to be a real term. So that is why this property is so important. So in this case, as you can see, x in this case is an exponent. It's not an actual term. And if we want to find the value of x, we want x to be an actual term. So I'm going to use this property here and move our exponent here, 3x minus 3, to the bottom. So now we will have 3x minus 3 times log 2 is equal to log 10. Now, because we want to find our value for x, we're going to have to isolate it. 
So we can do that by first dividing both sides by log 2 to move our log 2 to our right hand side. So then these two cancel out and I'll be left with 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10 over log 2. Now, the value of log 2, this is equal to 0 0.301. And log 10, this is the same thing as 1, because any logarithm always has a base of 10. So this is the same thing as log base 10 of 10, and this is essentially asking 10 to the power of x is equal to 10. So what is x? And x is equal to 1, right? So log 10 is equal to 1. So now we have 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over, now log 2, that is equal to 0 0.301. So we have 1 over 3.0, 0 0.301, sorry. So 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over 0 0.301. Now, 1 over 0 0.301, this is equal to approximately 3.3223. So now we have 3x minus 3 is equal to 3.3223. So I can simply add 3 on both sides. So now I have 3x is equal to 3 plus 3.3223 is equal to 6 point, sorry, 3223. Now I can divide both sides by 3 because we want to isolate x. These two would cancel out. And I would be left with x is equal to 6.3223 divided by 3 is equal to approximately 2.1074. So x is equal to 2.1074. And now, remember our original equation was a to the power of x is equal to 80. So if I plug in 2.104 into my calculator, so let's 2.8 to the power of 2.104, let me plug that into my calculator. So 8 to the power of 2.104, and yep, it is indeed approximately equal to 80 because it's not the exact value of 80, but it is approximately equal to 80 because they